Hi everybody, it's Dina and I'm back with another video. Um, today's video I'm kind of excited about. I finished my Lizzie blanket. That was from the Ophelia Talks crochet along. It was not a recent crochet along, but you can join it anytime. I am a huge fan of Ophelia Talks. I will link her channel down below um, and I will link her blog post, like her page, her website down below. She is affiliated with Lovecraft's Yarn and she makes like that right there and that right there. Those are her like color packs and she just does amazing job of color. She's just very soothing to watch. She has incredible patterns. She's very professional, very organized and I love her. So when I love somebody, I wanna share that around. Um, I was very skeptical. I have never done a blanket. Now I have to confess, I did shorten it a little bit. And I knew I was not gonna make it as big because I just found it for my couch in my living room. And it, it, if I did every single row, it would have been too cumbersome. So, you know, and, and I, I just don't know if I, I, I guess I would have been able to complete it because the way she did this crochet along every week, and I didn't do it every week, but she would, she, every week was um, a different five row repeat. And each row is a different stitch. And every time you change rows, it's a different color. Um, and you do six of those five row repeats. So each week would be 30 rows. I did that in the beginning and then I saw how big it was gonna be. So then I shortened it and I did like half. I think I did 15 rows or, uh, yeah, I think so. Maybe, maybe 20. But anyway, um, but I follow the color sequence and everything. And then if I noticed like I wasn't using a color because I wasn't going all the way down, then I would pull the colors from the other. And I think it worked out great. Now, um, the, the thing that had me the most concerned was the double border. It's a double border that you sandwich all the ends in. And as I suspected, I couldn't do the double border, not the way she did it. And 99% of the YouTubers out there, I looked at other tutorials, um, they did it exactly like her. Like you did a slip stitch around both sides. I hate slip stitch. I'm really bad at that. And combine that with working on the side, the edge, the unfinished non-stitch, and then doing slip stitches in there. Oh my Lord. I must have ripped it out four or five times. And by that time, like, there's got to be another way, right? There's always more than one way to do something. So I did it another way, and I think it turned out just fine. It might not look as pristine and perfect as if I did it the intended way, but I think it's fine. So I'm going to show you guys. I love this blanket. I love the colors. She did the colors all based on Pride and Prejudice and the movie, and the, the latest movie, and... Um, the colors as they transitioned through the movie. So that's really cool. And each week, um, let's say week one was like the Lizzie, you know, and then Elizabeth, and each week was named after a different character. So I'm gonna show you first how great she organizes her patterns. Now, if you go to her blog, you can download the free pattern and you could do it like this where each week, is in here. This is the whole entire Lizzie blanket. Here's the Lizzie blanket, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about. And that is our lovely, of, um, oh my God, Anya from Ophelia Talks. And I just think Anya is, like I said, she's just, she's remarkable. Um, and she used, of course, the, um, the Lizzie color pack. So you can pick your own. She, this is the DK yarn from Lovecrafts. Um, 
or you just go with her pack, which is what I did because her colors match my living room perfectly. And I love the way she picks colors. And then each week, well, in the beginning, and look at her patterns, how pretty. She puts all these little details. So they're just so pretty. Um, and, and it's very, very organized. She does the list of the colors here um, each week. So week one, it says week one, Jane. And she describes if there's any like things you need to know. And then the very simple pattern, row one, it's called Jane one, row Jane two. And these are the five different rows. And each row is a different stitch. And she has a YouTube tutorial to go along with it. And you make a swatch with, with, without the yarn that you're using for the project, you make it. And you do this for all the weeks so you have the swatch with all the ends so you can practice doing the double border. And that's how it is. And then in addition, she gives you this chart each week. And this is the 30 rows. So this is row one, two, three, four, five, and then row six is really, you know, repeating that row one, two, three, four. And then it tells you the row, the pattern, and the color. And then she gives you a hint on what stitch it is. And then you just check it off when you're done. Extremely organized, which makes it very enjoyable. And it's like that for the whole thing. Now, what I did in addition to this, in the beginning, I would pick, I would blow up the chart. Because once you know the rows, by saying Elizabeth one, double crochet, I knew that was just a double crochet row. And then you see Elizabeth two, W crochet, chain one. I know how to do that row because I did the tutorial and I know that row. And if I didn't, I just go and then look at the description. It gives you a hint. And I did it like this. And I did do this because I found it hard keeping the ball bands on and I didn't know what color they were. So now I would just look and I knew what color they were. So I did this the first few weeks and I have a few of these. And then I started to get to know the colors and I purchased this lovely caddy. And um, this, is, this is the name off of Amazon. And I love this for a project where you have multiple balls. So in the beginning I had these all in a bag and I would dig through and I would get them out. And it just wasn't working. Then I put them in a laundry basket and I still had to dig through. But let me just show you. This worked perfectly because it fit them all that I could see them. And I still kept these nearby just in case I didn't remember the, the colors because these are all very, you know, some of them are similar. Like this I know is khaki. Um, but, you know, so I would just look and go, oh, that's duck egg. Okay if I needed to. But then I just started using, I didn't print the separate thing, I just started using this that I had already printed and checking it off. So by the time I got to row 91, I did, um, yeah, I did 15 rows. I didn't do all the 30 and I stopped. And that's when I just started shortening it a little. And then this, when I got to row 121, I did 20 rows. So I, I really didn't shorten it that much, but I did. So that's the pattern. Um, I highly recommend it. Now for the border, it was called Mr. Darcy was the border and she did have specific colors to do it in, which it looks absolutely gorgeous. I'll show you hers again. Um, and it was much better looking than mine, but I didn't go through all that. I was so stressed with the border. I just randomly picked colors and went to town with it. Um, but hers, you can't really see it here. But I'll put a picture up on the screen. Yeah, because you really, you can't really see. All right, so that's the pattern. If you guys have not tried this, um, I highly recommend it. You know, if, if, you, if you're like me and you have a hard time with commitment on a big project, it's all mind over matter. I just looked at it as, I'm giving myself a year to finish this. A year. Like, Obviously, I'm finishing it in a year. And if I didn't, who's going to come after me? But I did. I finished it in a year. And I have this incredible blanket. I am so proud of it. I love it. And it was enjoyable once I got in the rhythm and, and everything being so organized. And this really did help. I wish I had this in the beginning. Um, and this is really cool. I'm not affiliated. But this even has, like, you could put your hooks and everything in it. So if you have a big project, 
where if you don't have a place to, to keep your um, whips or whatever, and it has a pocket here, a bigger pocket here, and then little pockets here, and little pockets here. Really cool, it's like a felt. I forget how much it was. I don't think it was that much. So, now I have all of this yarn left over, and I'm thinking this would make a gorgeous uh, sweater or shawl or vest. I mean, I, those colors are just gorgeous for the fall. What do you guys think? What do you think? All right, I'll link this down below too. You ready? Are you ready to see my blanket? I love it. I love it. Okay, get a stand. See, it's still, I mean, it's really big. And I did not need it any bigger than this for my couch. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I mean, I can't take the credit. It's her colors. It's, oh, she's so talented. I love, love these colors. But you know what? Honestly, if I took any of these and then just said, I'm going to randomly just draw colors out, kind of like Nan's Next Knots, Luck of the Draw, it would come out beautiful because colors are just beautiful. Okay, so my double border, it's not as wide as hers. Like I said, I was like getting done, but let's show you this up close. The different stitches, how amazing is this? Right? The colors, the different stitches. And there's my border, which, so millions of ends, right? Millions of ends. They're in here. Can't see them. Didn't did not have to. The only ends I had to tie in was like four ends. Uh, you know, like starting the borders and something like that. That's it. So let me show you. Here it is. It doesn't look as perfect. And I'll show you what I did. You know, and I just picked random colors. Okay, so what I did, let me see if I can explain this. Look at it. Oh my God, I can't believe it worked out. I can't believe it. Guys, I'm so proud of myself. I really am. Um, God, I love this. I cannot wait to put this in my living room. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. This would make a beautiful gift, but nobody's getting this. All right, wow. Let's see if I could explain what I did. As I said, slip stitches and I, we don't get along. So I thought, okay, I have to find a way to do a stitch on this side and this side, the exact same spot so they're even, to be able to build up and envelope it. So I did a front post double crochet around each stitch. Now when you do a front post double crochet on the other side, you get a little like stitch almost. And I used that stitch and I didn't, I was going to go through that stitch, which I could have to do uh, just a regular double crochet over here. Cause I didn't want the line on this side too, like the front post double crochet line. Um, I wanted it hidden. So I just did a double crochet, but I didn't use it because when I did go through that stitch, it was too loose and it would pull it up. So I just went, grabbed anything I could that was on the same was on the same spot. So I kind of used that stitch as a marker on where to put it. So first, first I did this one side, front post double crochet all the way around and three front post double crochet in each corner. That's what I did. Then the next row, I just did another front post double crochet all around. And then I decided to change it to just double crochet and always three stitches in, in the last, in the, in the, in the corner, I did that. And then I did the same thing on this side, except I did front post double crochet. No, wait, sorry. I did double crochet for the first row. Like I said, next to the stitch that was from the other side. So I knew they were lining up and I knew they'd be the same number. And then I did, um, so I did regular double crochet, then front post double crochet, and then regular double crochet. And then I finished it with the joining row. Now I could have kept going and made it as big as I wanted, but I was done because it's, it's a pretty big blanket. So then I just did a half double crochet all around, three in the corner, and that's how I joined it. So I just joined them together and stuffed them in. And if you, you could feel like it's a little thick, but 
it wasn't that bad doing it that way. I hate slip stitches. And once I thought, you know what, honestly, no one's going to know. And maybe, yeah, it would have looked better the other way. But oh, come on. Right? I mean, I love it. I love it. So my Lizzie blanket, I love it. So picture this as a sweater. Wouldn't this be a beautiful sweater? I love these colors. So I encourage you guys, if you want to make a beautiful blanket, this is gorgeous. It's a lot of fun. The mindset needs to be, don't stress yourself out. Pick it up when you want to work on it. Um, and if this doesn't float your boat, just check her out. Check out her channel. She's got a million, million unbelievable tutorials. And like I said, if you like written patterns that are extremely organized and the organization in itself gets me motivated because she's so organized, um, check her out. I think you guys will really, really like her. So that's Anya at Ophelia's Talks linked down below. So please check her out. So in the winter, the fall, you guys, I'm going to film when I'm in my living room, cuddled up on the couch with the fire going in my Lizzie blanket. And everybody in this family has to know this is just my blanket because my boys will destroy it. All right. So that's it. Um, I did want to mention the top that I'm wearing. This is that, um, hmm. I remember the name of it. Okay, it's this one I can't pronounce. I had made it and that is the mandala and I had ran out of yarn but this worked up way too big uh, but I did buy the yarn to finish it and it's really pretty but it's too big but you could wear it kind of off the shoulder a little and I did go around the neck a few times to make it okay um, but it's just what it is is it's way too big here and then too tight here but it looks pretty on the mannequin. And then I did it with the actual yarn that the video called for, which was the Lion Brand Trubu. That's what the pattern called for. And it came out much better. Um, I still made this part too tight, but I mean, it's definitely wearable. I love this look. And this is super, super soft. Love the yarn. So if you were to make this, um, I had more success using the yarn that it called for, but I don't think that's necessary. I just think, uh, you know, even though that's mandala number three, um, it, it, acrylic, I think is the problem. So I wouldn't use acrylic. Update you on this. This was a huge fail. Um, this was the, the, this dress that I made from Bag o Day and I turned it into a baby doll top, but I used acrylic, um, yarn two strands together because it was a size two or three, but I shouldn't have done that and it came out too thick, but I wanted to finish it anyway. I ran out of that yarn. So then I added um, a solid and then I added some of this softy baby cotton. And to be honest, um, if I did the whole thing in the softy baby cotton, I think it would have came out really pretty. So here's the softy baby cotton, perfect drape. This had good drape, but I held two together. And then this was just where it's too thick. But I mean, it's cute. I'll put it on, I'll show you, but it's it's really, you know, this it doesn't on. Look. This is just too thick, but I mean, the pattern's gorgeous and it's super easy to turn this into a baby doll. So I'll link that pattern down below. That's the baby dress I did for one of my crochet, my bag o day patterns of the week. And um, Sarah Hayes, she's on my Facebook. Hi, Sarah. She did an unbelievable baby doll in it. Um, and so check out my Facebook because you can see her picture. Actually, I'll put it up here. I'll find it and put it up here so you guys can see it because it's gorgeous. She is so talented. Um, so it was the yarn choice. Other than the yarn choice, super easy to take that dress and turn it into a baby doll for an adult. So you could really do that with any one of her dresses. And she's got so many cute toddler dresses. But you can see it's just too thick, but it's really cute. I mean, I really like the, you know, just the look and the idea of it. I like the flowiness. Um, so picture in a lighter yarn. And I mean, the colors are pretty. It's just a little too thick, but super cute. And I like things that pull away, hide the little poochie poochie. Um, yeah. I mean, down here is really pretty. This is just too thick. But that's how you learn, right? All right, so those are all my updates. Real quick, I just wanted to throw these two sweaters in. This was so pretty, though. It's 
So I'll link all these patterns down below if you guys are interested in any of them. This is really pretty. The only thing is I would, um, I don't have any more of this yarn, but I would stitch up here a little bit um, because I did not need to make this as big as it was called for. Uh, and then that would be fine. But the top is so pretty, really pretty. It's just a matter of increases. This is so soft. All right, guys. I hope you guys are doing great. So enjoy the rest of your week. Okay, guys. See you in my next video. Bye.